What's up? I'm Pastor Todd and this is Pastor Daphne. We want to thank you so much for watching the message today. We believe it will impact your life. We do want to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you face to face if you're ever in the Seminole area. But we hope this message will be a blessing to you. Y'all ready for the word today? Come on, let's get into the word. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 7. How many enjoyed watching Miss Daphne on live stream last Sunday? Was it amazing? She brought it about wives and, and moms and just, um, just an amazing message on Proverbs 31. I encourage you ladies and men for that matter, go back and watch the service. It was incredible. Um, she has got so much wisdom, you know, after raising three kids and still raising me. Um, she is amazing. And um, so I encourage you guys to go back and get that message. It was uh, phenomenal. Today we're going to continue our series on faith-filled families. And today we're going to talk about a faithful man. So ladies, we talked about you last Sunday. Men, I get to talk about you today. Now, last Sunday I noticed something about if the men watched um, online last Sunday, you probably got a whole lot of ammunition you could use against your wife last Sunday. Today, wives, I'm giving you a lot of ammunition. Whoa, that's a pretty big response. <laughs> so let's get right into the middle of the word today. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 7 says this, Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon. Verse number 8, He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. And verse 9, and God will do this. So I say, God will do this. Why will God do this? The Bible goes on and says this, for he is faithful to do what he says. And he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We've been talking about how 2020 is the year of faith, being full of faith. And God is faithful, and I'm going to be full of faith. Somebody say that. Say, God is faithful, and I'm full of faith. Look to your neighbor and say, God is faithful, and I'm full of faith. Find somebody else around you and say, God is faithful, and I'm full of faith. You believe that today. Amen, amen. The word faithful, it means trustworthy. It means someone that has been proven to be worthy of trust. God is faithful, and we are full of faith. Faith this year will be revived, and faith is going to grow. All of us are going to grow in faith. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 14. God has given us a family so we can stay strong in these last days. God has given us a family so we can stay strong in these last days. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 14, the Bible says this, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man. If you remember, we talked in depth about this set of verses two weeks ago, and we talked about how God is all about family. God is the one who invented family. But notice in verse number 15, the apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus kind of dissected or put family in two different terms, I would say. One, the whole family in heaven, and number two, on earth. So we have a spiritual family and we have an earthly family. Your earthly family is the family you were naturally born into. Your spiritual family is your family that you were born again into. So for us as believers, as human beings, we have a natural family and we have a spiritual family. This was God's plan. Why? Because not only do we have to have a natural family to operate on this earth, but we must have a supernatural spiritual family family on this earth that we can draw strength from. We were not designed to do this all by ourselves. God created the church, this spiritual family, for all of us to come on Sundays and Wednesdays so we can be built up, strengthened, nourished, push that reset button so we can face the rest of the week that we face every day of our lives. 
So let's talk about family today. Turn over to chapter 5. Go over a couple chapters. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 22. So if God created this thing called family, and there's a spiritual family and an earthly family, and those families is what causes us to have strength in these last days, then God also gave us scriptural, spiritual guidelines on how families should be structured. And we find this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. There is a spiritual scriptural guideline to how families are are structured. God set it up that the man, the husband, would be the head of the household. And wives are to come alongside and help their husbands lead their house. They're to submit to that authority that God has given them. Now, there's a whole lot I could go on just right there. But me and Miss Daphne, we're going to talk about marriage and we're going to talk about raising kids in the next couple weeks. So I'm going to kind of put that on the shelf and I want to focus on men Today, the challenge that we as men are facing today is knowing where we stand in this godly structure. It's understanding how we operate as a man and how a woman operates. Now, how many know for men that could be difficult at times to try to understand how a woman operates? Thank you for those amens because I was getting kind of lonely up here. And It's interesting how God created us that way. And I know that God sits up in heaven and laughs. And one of the reasons why he's up there laughing is because a man's trying to understand a woman and a woman's trying to understand a man. And it just causes him to laugh because it's craziness to try to think about how we all work together as a man and a woman. I came across this video. In fact, um, Emily, she sent this video to me this morning, not knowing that I was going to actually minister on this message. But this really kind of can show us how a woman operates and how a man operates. So you guys check out this video. You know what a day, because here's the thing. Guys and gals are wired differently. Like, our, we have different methods. Women, did y'all hear her description of quality time? Oh, Take my God. Eat. Nails. Food. Hallmark special movies. <laughs> Eating. Just being with each other. No touching. Did y'all hear this? There was no man in here that was like, oh, man, I'll I sign up for that any day, doc. Put me in. Put me in on that. No. Like, I'm going to tell you why. Don't laugh, Reggie. I heard you. <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell, tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. It's not you. Okay? Hmm. It's not you. I would. See, I, we already feel like y'all don't want to spend time with us. Let me explain. See? I don't see, have a this problem is an issue. with you. Yeah. yeah. I want to be around yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I want to spend as much time around each other. Right. Here's Only why, with certain terms. Here's why it's difficult. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you why it's difficult. Mm-hmm. Men, we are... I don't want to use the word predator. <laughs> we are... We're hunters. Oh my we God. are warriors. We are gladiators. We are made like this. Yeah. Like, men, I'm going to help you. I see a lot of women here in the room and all over the world shaking their head <laughs> like this. Yeah, shake, you think, girl, girl, you're shake. not a man. Yeah. How do you know? Gee, that's the problem. Listen, <laughs> you're pulling no pad out. Y'all listen to this. Don't listen. Men need <laughs> victories. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is gonna. I'm telling you, this is gonna help y'all so much. Mm-hmm. It's gonna explain the way our minds are. Men need activities mm-hmm. that we can walk away feeling like we've accomplished something. This is why we're into sports. This is really why we're in the video games. It has nothing to do with what's happening virtually. It's walking away feeling like I've accomplished something. Mm. I got the new high score. I won. I did. We like, that's why even with movies, we, we can't do the Hallmark specials. We need action. We need to, that has to be a hero. That has to be a villain. Somebody got to die. Somebody got to win. Like we need, even when we hang out with the homies, we never just casually, you ne- like we never just around each other. Just, man, it's fun. Like it's going to be, like, women can do that. Y'all can just, oh, we just had the greatest time we just did. staring at each other. You get to know each other better, you talk. So, and y'all ask, what's up? So, <laughs> what's the top Don't five do things? Don't do that. You stop swinging your legs. The, stop. The, stop. What's the top stop. five things you would do differently in 2020? Go. <laughs> what? 
We do do that. What? That's how you get to know people. What are we talking about right now? Girl, we don't turn on Sports Center and watch somebody get dunked on. I don't know what is happening. Hours of just, all right, uh, let's see what else. What are we t- No one's winning. So how do we make, how do we, how do we work this we out? We need competition. How do we work it out, Pastor Travis? We're different. It's clear. Hope, no, I'm We're serious. different. You I'm made serious. your point. No, We're no, different. I want, but I want to say one more thing. Oh, here we go. I want to say one more thing. I just want to say, I hope for women, like, that is liberating. Mm. Um, for some are comforting. To know, like, you're not the problem. It's not that the guy is avoiding you or don't want to be around you. His idea... He just don't want to do what we want to do. His idea of fun is just different. Like, there's nothing that you named that has winning involved. Mm. Nails, who won? (laughs) (laughs) I did. We don't even understand. Self-care. I I took care of myself. (laughs) I got plum watermelon color. It's a new (laughs) color that came out with a diamond. And we just like... And while we're sitting there, you get your nails done. Tell me five things you'll change about 20 minutes. Our minds are just, we like, what? How did I get in this? It's not you. It's not you. We need, we need. We need victory. <laughs> we need to conquer. Y'all enjoy that? Just a, just a basic little view of how men and women operate. One thing, the reason why I love that video is because you saw the genuineness that both of those ministers had uh, up there, even though they, they're, from, they're not from West Texas per se, you know. But it's so refreshing to see that there is people out there that are willing to talk about the differences and not afraid of it. And for us as believers, specifically here, we're going to talk more about men today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not all about you. Find some else, it's not all about you. So, ladies, let me help you today. Ladies, I am going to give some ammunition today, but don't be the Holy Ghost Junior and use it. <laughs> Husbands, men, last time Miss Daphne ministered last week, you have a lot of ammunition to use. Don't use it. Allow the Spirit of God to work on your man. Allow the Spirit of God to work on your wife. Amen. Just know that you have some ammunition. Now, turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse number 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 27. We're going to talk about a God-made man, a man that's made in God's image. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says this, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We know this. We know that we all were created in the image of God. So men, I want to speak to you specifically. You were created in the image of God. Your mom and your dad conceived you, but God created you. You can take on the characteristics of your mom and your dad. Some good, some not good. But whatever it is, you were still created by God himself. So when you're looking at standards to live by, when you're looking after examples to live by, I wish I was more like like my dad or, or I had this tendency like my mom and I wish this and I wish this. Ultimately, you are not created by your parents. You were just conceived. Men, you were created by God himself for such a time as this. God knows you. He knows the very hairs on your head, some more, some less. But he knows everything about you. So trying to figure out things in life can be difficult at times. But there's one person that's always been there, has always been in your life, that knows everything, that can help you through everything. And that's our Father God. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 9. So God made man. We can make a declaration that if God made man, then we are a God-made man. And a God-made man. A God-made man. <laughs> a God-made man is a faithful man. Why? Because God is faithful. 
God is our standard for faithfulness. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 9. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's already in our spiritual DNA, men, to be faithful. We defined faithfulness at the beginning of this message as simply this, trustworthy, someone that has proven to be worthy of trust. It's in our spiritual DNA as men, as God made men to be worthy of trust. With our spouses, with our friends, in our community. It's in us as men to be trustworthy, to be full of faith, to be faithful. Now let's look at some other things here. Turn to Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 20. There's a blessing that comes when we're focused on being faithful. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 20, a faithful man will abound with the blessings, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. One of the things that we as men must understand that God made us, God is faithful, our desire, our pursuits, our purpose in life is to be trustworthy, to be faithful. You can always tell when times are thin, when times get tough, you should always check up on your faithfulness. How faithful have you been to prayer? How faithful have you been to study the Word of God? How faithful have you been to church? How faithful have you been ultimately to your Father God? Because when you are faithful to Him, not allowing your jobs, not allowing the pressures, not allowing all the things to pull you away. But you, when you're faithful to him, the Bible says that you will abound with the blessings. Now this goes above any kind of sociological standing, any kind of economic thing. This goes way above that because God, when he says you will abound with the blessing, you don't have to worry about what the economy is doing. You don't have to worry about your jobs. You don't have to worry about this could happen, this could happen. No, when you are a faithful man, you will abound with the blessings. Hallelujah. It's a standard that's above anything that this earth could ever offer. God is looking for some faithful men. You're there in Proverbs chapter 28. Go over to chapter 20. Look at verse number 6. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 6 says this, most men will proclaim his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? The Bible is very clear here. In fact, God is very clear. He's not looking for you to make a lot of money. He's not looking for you to build all these big businesses. He's not looking for you to just uh, try to keep your marriage together and try to keep your kids from going crazy. No, what God's really looking for is faithfulness. Look to your neighbor and say, I am faithful because God is faithful. We as men, we must focus on our faithfulness. So I want to give you some characteristics of a faithful man. Number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. A faithful man goes to church. I'll say it again. A faithful man goes to church. Church, And this is the reason why. Turn to Matthew chapter 10, verse number 32. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. I love this set of scriptures that Jesus was talking about. He said this, whoever confesses me before men... I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. See, going to church is an expression of a faithful man's commitment to God. Now, you might be sitting here today or watching online and say, Well, I don't have to go to church to make a public declaration of my walk with God. No and yes. Yes, you need to go to church. And no, you don't have to go to church to make your public declaration. You must do it in both places. At church and out in the community. God has set it up so many times, and we've talked about this for so many weeks, that going to church is more not just for you to be built up, but it's a public declaration of your faith to God. Going to church is a visible, intangible expression of a faithful man's allegiance to God. That's why Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. As Americans, we know this. 
We make a pledge of allegiance to the flag. As Americans, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Amen. And that goes on and says that we may under God individual with liberty and justice for all. So there is an allegiance that we give as Americans. So for us, if it's important for us to pledge allegiance to a flag, how much more should we as Christians come to church and make our pledge of allegiance to our Heavenly Father? Avoiding church, avoiding coming to church, men, is something that we are not created to do, not designed to do. We need each other. It's a time to where we make a public declaration, a pledge of allegiance to our Heavenly Father. In Psalms chapter 22, verse number 22, the psalmist said this, that I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Not only should we make a public declaration, a pledge of allegiance to our Heavenly Father in our community, but it's scriptural to do it in the congregation. Men, faithful men go to church. Come on, can I get a better amen than that? Faithful men go to church. Well, the church isn't four walls. Yes, it is. Look it up. There's a universal church and the local church. The first time Jesus said church, it actually is defined. He was actually saying people that would leave their homes to go to a central location where other believers were at going to church. So there's a universal church. All We know this. All, all across the world right now, people are going to church. This is the body of Christ, but we are all called to be a part of a local church. So number one, if you're going to be a faith-filled man, you must go to church. Bring your family to church. Come on, can I get a better amen than that? Bring your family to church. Let me just say this. Wives, you don't have to push your husband to go to church. Just live it. Just be a God-fearing, a, a, a Proverbs 31 woman, and let God deal with your man about going to church. But men, I want to speak to you today about going to church. Church is what you need because the world is getting more wicked every day. You need other men, other faithful men around you to sharpen each other. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir today because you're here. But Sunday, next Sunday is coming, and you'll be tempted not to come to church. The Sunday after that, something's going to happen to keep you from coming to church. You've got to make a stand today for your family and your relationship with God. I'm going to church. Sunday is on the way. I'm going to be a faithful man because that's what God is looking for. He's looking for for faithfulness. I want my family to know that going to church is healthy and it causes them to live a healthy, strong, spiritual life forever. In Jesus' name. I'm so thankful that we made a decision many, well, my parents made a decision many, many years ago. My mom and dad was at a, um, when my mom was in a revival meeting in, in Lubbock in the mid, um, early 70s, mid, mid 70s. And she, she was a good Baptist girl living in Hobbs, New Mexico. And um, she got married to my dad. They moved to Lubbock. And dad got a really good, high paying job and was working hard and just sensing the stress. And, and of course, they had me, so that probably didn't have that a whole lot either. But um, and then my little brother was a little baby at that time. And I remember my mom was invited to go to a service in Lubbock. And they were having what's called the Jesus Movement. And there was just a powerful move of God. Hippies were coming to the altars, laying down their drugs and all kinds of paraphernalia and everything. And my mom went to that meeting and got not only radically saved, rededicated her life to the Lord, but got filled with the Holy Ghost. And she came home on one evening, and my dad was sitting in his big chair drinking a, a, a beer. And, and believe it or not, my dad drinking a beer, that just blows my mind. But anyways, and, and him drinking a beer, my mom comes in the house. She didn't say anything to him. She didn't go up to him and say, you need to put that beer down. You're going to die and go to hell if you don't quit drinking. She didn't say anything like that. She just lived it. And my dad said when she walked into the living room and he was sitting there drinking that beer, he, said, he looked at her and said, something's changed in you, honey. Whatever it is, I want it. I want it. So the next night, the next, the next night they had the service, my dad and mom went to church together. And my dad, who was a Methodist, got radically rededicated his life to the Lord, got filled with the Holy Ghost. And look what the Lord has done since then. I'm so thankful that my parents went to church. 
Come on, somebody. I'm so thankful that my parents said, boy, you're not going to determine us going to church or not. You're going to church. It's non-negotiable. I remember as a little kid not wanting to go to church, and my hair's all messed up and didn't want to get out of my pajamas. And I remember my mom looking at me saying, you can go to church looking like that, or you can get ready. It's your choice. And I had some friends that would make fun of me if I came in my Spider-Man pajamas. <laughs> and my mama was serious. So if your kids are kind of bawling and squalling about going to church, you set the standard and you say, no, we're going to church. It's non-negotiable. You need it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So going to church is so important. Number two, a faithful man is faithful to his word. A faithful man is faithful to his word. In Matthew chapter 5, verse number 37, but let your yes, Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no, no. For whatever is more than this is from the evil one. Let your yes be yes, men, and your no be no, men. Basically, what Jesus was talking about here, he was talking about integrity. And if we look up this word integrity, it means honesty. It means truthfulness. It means honor. It means reliability. It means uprightness. So when Jesus was making that declaration, let your yes be yes and your no be no, he was basically saying, I'm looking for some faithful men full of integrity. Really, our wives, if you're married men, if you're married, your wife is looking for integrity. Can I get any wives saying amen? They're looking for respect. They're looking for a man that they can look up to, that's honest, truthful, reliable, that they can respect. And treat as a king that God's called them to be. In Psalms 101, verse number 1 and 2 of the New Living Translation, the psalmist says this, I will sing of your love and justice. Lord, I will praise you with songs. I will be careful to live a blameless life when you come to me. Will you come to me and help me? I will lead a life of integrity. Notice this. I will lead a life of integrity in my own home. I will lead a life of integrity in my own home. Again, integrity is defined as a firm adherence to a code. Men, faithful men that are full of integrity, they adhere to a specific code. And for us as faithful men, God-fearing men, men that love Jesus, a man of integrity has a firm adherence to the Bible. Come on, somebody, to the Bible. Not how dad used to do it, not how grandpa used to do it, not how, how everybody else is doing it. No, what does the Bible say about it? Psalms 119, verse number 9 says this, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to the word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. To be a faithful man means to be a man that's faithful to his word. A man full of integrity. A firm adherence to what the Bible says. We as men must always say this. What does the Bible say? When a problem comes, what does the Bible say? Whenever I don't know how to handle a situation, what does the Bible say? To be a faithful man, to be a man of integrity, to uphold, adhere to a code, uh, or, or to hold to, to the Bible, we must be men of the Word of God. Turn back over to Psalms 101, verse number 2, and I want to show something to you. Psalms 101, verse number 2. Be a man, being a man, a faithful man, being a man is more important in your house than it is in your community. Let me say that again. Being a faithful man, being a man of integrity is more important in your house than in the community. Verse number two says, I will be careful to live a blameless life. When you come to help me, I will lead a life of integrity in my own home. Your wife and your kids need you to be trustworthy. Your wife, your kids need you to be reliable. Your wives, your kids, your family need you to be honest and real and transparent. Being a man is more important to be house. And I'm so thankful for my dad and my, even both my grandfathers. And being around good, strong, godly men 
and men full of integrity because I knew because of the way I was raised how to respond to different situations. Even whenever I was in rebellion to God back in the day when I wasn't living for him, I always knew because of the way I was raised, I could always fall back on God even though I wasn't living for him. And when I came back to God, those very things that was placed inside of me came out again. I remember the first time I held uh, Ben, my firstborn, um, gosh, I was like 21 years old, 20, 21 years old, just a young whippersnapper. And, um, and I remember obviously just going through the whole process with the birthing, and that was an interesting situation because I was there and I saw everything. All I got to say is, thank God I'm a man. But anyways, I remember them wrapping him up and, and, um, and going in there, and, and they, they had him in the little room, and after they cleaned him, I remember just really, the first time I really got to look at him. And I, I was looking at him and just saying, man, God, you're just, this is crazy. You are awesome, and how you create things, and this baby here, and of course the responsibility of being a dad fell on me. I'm like, Lord, I'm going to be a dad now. And man, I can't even pick up my shoes, and, and I look, you know, the whole thing. And, um, and I'm married, and I, I don't even understand this woman, and I, you know, this whole thing, I love her, but golly, Lord. anyways, all this, and so my dad walks up to me, and as I'm looking at Ben, and I looked at my dad, and I said, Dad, what in the world am I going to do? I, I just don't even know how I'm going to be, how, and what I'm going to do, and this is what he said, with that, he just immediately just looked at me straight in the eye, and he said, Todd, if you do anything, do this, Treat, teach your boy how to be a man of his word, be a man of his word. And he didn't say, well, teach him how to hear the voice of God, teach him how to pray, teach him how to read the Bible and all that. All that's good, but he taught, he, he's told me this. He said, teach, teach him how to be a man of his word. It's so important, men, to be a man of your word. Can I get an amen? In the times that we're living in, honesty, reliability, trust, trustworthiness is all about integrity. And a faithful man must have that integrity at his house. You can ask my kids, if I say it, we're going to do it. Amen. If I say it, we're going to do it. Because they know that that's the way it's going to be. When daddy says it, that's, that settles it. It's almost like when the Bible says it, that settles it. Amen. It's a holy hush up in this church right now. It's really quiet right now. This tells me something that I, I'm not a perfect, my goodness, I am not a perfect father, perfect dad or anything, but one thing that I've always held on to for all these years of raising three kids, and now I have an empty nest, and it's party time at my house now, glory <laughs> to God, and after raising three kids and everything, one thing that I've always endeavored to raise my kids is to be men and, and a woman of their word. That's more important than, than teaching them how to pray. I know that's why you're saying more important. Absolutely, because you can pray up a storm and then go outside the church and lie. And not have, not have any integrity in the community. Or you can have all this integrity in the community and go home and come with all kinds of excuses around your kids why you can't be with them. Why you can't, can't do this and can't do this. It's not the way it should be. God is looking for faithful men full of integrity. Amen. Number three. A faithful man knows God's voice and follows it. A faithful man knows God's voice and follows it. Abraham positioned himself to hear God's voice. In Genesis chapter 15, verse number 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. We know that God promised him that he would be the father of many nations. Well, how did he get that promise? He spent time with the father. So whenever the Lord came to him and he was about to make a mistake, the Lord stopped him and said, nope, this isn't the one, but this one is. And it all came because he had been faithful to be in God's presence. And he knew God's voice. In Genesis chapter 17, verses 4 through 6, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. God is speaking to Abraham. And you shall be the father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but, you, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of many nations. See, I want you guys to understand this, that Abraham received a call from God. He didn't receive the call from Sarah. Let me say that again. He received a call from God, not from Sarah. Now, wives, you're to help your husband, but you shouldn't be the only voice that he hears. 
Can I get a better amen than that? Your husbands, you should first hear God's voice on it and then go ask your wife. <laughs> many times I've heard some things from the Lord and many times it was pizza the night before. That's what wives are there for. They're there to help us make the right decision. But when it comes specifically to the things of God, you must know God's voice. You must spend time in his presence. You must dedicate time out of your schedule daily to spend with him. Because decisions like Abram, he could have made a wrong decision. But decisions was turned, bad decisions was turned because he was in God's presence and he knew God's voice. I'll close with this one. i got so many more of them. But I'll close with this one today. A faithful man is responsible for producing peace and not chaos in his family. I'll say that again. A faithful man is responsible for producing peace in his family, not chaos in his family. Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 25, the New Living Translation says this, Worry weighs a person down, and an encouraging word cheers a person up. Men, when you are in your house, speak words that encourage, that build up, not tear down. If there's chaos in your house, it's nobody's fault but your own because you're the head of the house. Well, my wife is this. My kids are this. And my stepkids are this. And my, my, my this and that. It don't matter. You're head of the house. Your words create peace or chaos in your house. A faithful man produces that peace through building one another up instead of tearing another person down. I was, um, years ago, I was talking to a, a young man, just got married, and, and um, there was having some marriage problems, and he really didn't have um, a good, healthy upbringing himself, and so I was trying to help him, you know, with this whole thing called marriage, and he had, he, he, he didn't have a lot of discretion with the words that he used. He was very blunt and very black and white, to where the point when he would speak to his wife and he'd get irritated, it was almost like verbal abuse. It was just, it was getting really really tough, and she was about to leave him over it. And he came to my office and was like, I'm doing everything I know how to do. I mean, I'm, I'm praying, I'm, I'm going to church, and she just irritates me about this and this, and the next thing you know, she's crying, and, and she's just all upset, and I don't even know what I'm doing. I said, well, what did you exactly say? And he said it, and I went, and inside of me I went, I would have slapped you instead of cried. <laughs> how many women know what I mean by that? <laughs> Hands went up all over the place. And, and, uh, but I didn't say it. I said, well, let me help you here. The words, the very words and the tone that you use towards your wife, think about it. If you had a daughter and her husband said that to your daughter, what would you do? It got quiet. And I said, because ultimately your wife is a daughter of God himself. You don't talk to her like that. And then I said, do you have kids? And he was like, well, we have one kid, it's a son, blah, 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 blah. I said, well, you understand that you don't talk to God's kids, even though it's your kids, in a negative, derogatory, demeaning way. Because really, God gave you your kids, you just conceived the kids. So talking down on your kids, talking, well, you're, you're this and this and this. I can't even say it out of my mouth, but maybe you've said this about you're an idiot. Quit being so stupid. Those kind of words like that should never be spoken out of a parent's mouth. Can I get a better amen than that? Well, that's the way I was raised. Stop it. You don't have to live that way anymore. If you were raised that way, turn the tide, break the curse. Be Christ-like. Let God be your father and let him lead you in the right way to go. Amen. Well, I'm just joking around when I say it. No, you're not. It might be jokingly, but down deep, it hurts that child. Is anybody here today? Anybody get anything today? It's so important, men of faith, faithful men, you're responsible for bringing peace and not chaos in your family. Proverbs chapter 15, verse number one, the New Living Translation says this, a gentle answer turns away wrath. But harsh words stir up anger. It's important, men, to be that faithful man and use your words wisely. And lastly, 
A faithful man, I said number four would be in, but I, I got to get into this one. A faithful man will seek out other faithful men that will challenge them to grow. If you're going to be successful as a godly man, as a God-made man, you need other men to help you. Don't isolate yourself. A wise man, Proverbs 1, verse number 5, a wise man will hear and increase understanding, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. It's important for you men, including myself, that we get around other men, that we can sharpen each other, getting around other faithful men. In our church, we have a phenomenal um, men's ministry, circles ministry. And I encourage you, man, if you're looking for a connection, see Pastor David, see Pastor Chris, see these guys. There's some awesome. John Gunther, is, um, he, was, where, he was sitting back there a while ago, I think. Maybe not. But anyways, John's another leader of that. And I encourage you guys to hook up with that. Men, get hooked up with other men. Amen. You need it. No matter if you're 16, 17, 18, whatever you are, we need to be around other faithful men. Let's pray. Bow your heads today. Father, we want to thank you so much for your word today. Thank you, Lord, that you're raising up men to be faithful in these last days. Full of faith, full of integrity. Faithful to the word. Eliminating the chaos and bringing peace. Lord, I thank you that we're men that will know your voice and heed your voice and follow your voice. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If everybody says, bow and eyes closed. If there's any men here today that you want to get some things right with God, you, you're saved, you know you're going to heaven, that's not what I'm really asking. But you've said some things, you've done some things that you know is not right. And there's even when you did it, there's this little icky feeling down on the inside of you. You know you shouldn't have done it. Let's get it right today. Let's make it right. I'm not going to ask you to come down front. I'm not going to do anything like that. It's between you and God. But what I am going to do is, is make a public display, a, an actual pledge to God that you can do everything you can to not go back to that same mistake over and over again. Right now, with everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed, specifically men, you know what that is. You know what those things are. Let's make it right today. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. If you're a man, you're like, I got some things I got to deal with. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look at the men. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, you see these men's hands. You see every one of them is raised up, even those that are online. Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the spirit, your spirit invading their lives right now. They raise their hand. They, they recognize their weakness. And I, Father, I thank you that you're a God that forgives and reestablishes us back on that foundation of your word. In Jesus' name. Now, everybody, just put your hand over your heart. And men specifically, just pray this prayer. Ladies, you can pray this prayer too. It's a genetic prayer too. Just repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I know the standards that you've set for me. And I haven't fulfilled them. And I ask for forgiveness. I've turned my back on your word. I know what I'm supposed to do. So I ask you to forgive me. Take away all of that pain. Take away all of that, that, that stuff. And I stand today completely whole and new in Jesus' name. As far as the east is from the west, as far as you've removed my transgression, I will be a faithful man. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Y'all believe that today? Amen. Aren't you glad you came to church? Stand to your feet today. Let me pray for you. There will be some faithful men up in this church rising up. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Next Sunday, um, let me look at something here before I say anything. Because I'll get in trouble if I don't make sure. i got to check the calendar make sure I'm right here. So next Sunday, yeah, we're going to do it twice. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about marriage, me and Miss Daphne. And then that Sunday after that, the first Sunday of March, we're going to talk about raising kids. How many need some help raising kids? So do I. So y'all come and we'll see what happens. <laughs>
It'd be one of those services. <laughs> Amen. Aren't you glad you came today? Well, let me pray for you. Father, we pray for one another on our right and on the left. Lord, we just call each other blessed coming in and blessed going out. We're the head and not the tail, above and up beneath. We're overcomers. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're people that walk by faith and not by sight. We always triumph in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, as we leave today. We'll be transforming lives, changing the world for you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on Wednesday night. Enjoy your afternoon.